Alrighty, everybody, we got ourselves game one of the finals here between Ascend and D. Finklin. Uh, the bans for D. Finklin was Wraith, and the ban for Ascend was Fey. So no more you fell uh, with that uh, Wraith of his, and we don't have Faded Ren with the Fey. So this should be a fun one. We already have I Don't Stack on Rampage, Haley XR on that favored Bellica, a Tang Gruner on Revenant in solo lane from what I'm assuming from what we've seen in the previous games. Tang yeah. Gruner really likes that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on the other side, we have a Muriel, a Kwong, a Twin Blast, and a Murdoch. So two carries. We got Neft back on that Sparrow and Erdbeer back on that phase. We saw that lethal combo in the second game of the semifinals against washed up players. And we got Wukong. And I'm assuming that's going to be Cranky Trash Can on that Wukong jungle. And we're probably going to see Sour on that Kwong one more time. Everybody's playing their comfort picks. These are the finals. They're very, very important, obviously. And they're going to go tr try hard as much as they can. I'm very much excited to see this series play out between these two teams. Yeah, all the way through that draft you were saying, I was just smirking because I just saw Tang on that Revenant. And then seeing the rest of it unfold, they are all very comfort picks for um, Deflinken. So, you know, and I've been versus all of them in these roles. And the most scariest one I would say is probably Tank Runa with that Revenant. Especially if it's a Sour as a Quang into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as as an EU person, you've probably run into these guys. That's why I wasn't so sure of uh, of the EU players, but uh, they definitely have proved themselves. They got all the way to the finals. I know what you felt, cranky, Shui, faded. I know all those guys very well, and I know what they're capable of. And it's always interesting to see the clash between NA and EU, especially in the final rounds like this. So we're gonna kick it off right now. We got ourselves Twin Blast in the middle. Actually, faded rent on Twin Blast in the middle. What do you make of this? I mean, I do see a lot on NA. Not so much on EU. You normally go for your standard Fey, Bellica, Revenant, Wraith. You don't really see too many others. Maybe a Gideon, but you never see a Twin Blast in mid. You see more Grims, actually. Meanwhile, um, solo lane, we got Sour slicing up Tangrooner. He got in real close. Trying to get past those minions. Exactly played in the Sour's hands. Got him in a melee range. And dealt some damage on him. I think if Sour times his Light of the Heavens properly. He can just get rid of a lot of damage. That Tangrooner would normally do. And I think that's exactly what Sour's trying to do. I was just about to say. I don't stack has a card. But I did just realize he did stack. Uh, put wards into Cranky Trash Can's Strong Jungle. So oh, there's yeah. not going to be an early gank onto Tangruna. That deep ward is very, very useful indeed. Very good strat. And then you do have a uh, left side warded by the phase, so... Sour, very low. So is Tangruner. Sour's trying to back right now, though, it seems. But we'll see what ends up happening. If he gets one more... Uh, oh, Tangruner actually missed that. Obliterate. Murdoch actually ends up going down in duo lane. Neft and Rampage with the gank. They were able to secure that kill on Murdoch. But I'm still here just looking at this 1v1 with Tangruner. I'm very, very yeah, interested so in that. They ended up backing like, oh, off at that as well. It's a tether, and he's dead. Honestly, I would have backed a lot sooner, but Tangaruna has a plan, and... Sour gets However, that regen right buff, so now he can keep going. Faded Ren does get the purple buff, and he's going to go in the middle. Will that make a difference, though? I don't know. He is spotted, but uh, it's not really yeah, going to matter. double in his... Rampage coming over to solo lane. Does Sour know? Does not look like he does. Rampage is invisible. Throws out that rock. Now lands with Sour. Tangruner goes in there. They're trying to deal some damage onto him. Sour will not be able to escape. 
and that's going to be a, a nice little advantage for Tang Junior there. So st I don't stack, doing a very good job of ganking. Helped gank dual lane, helped gank solo lane, helped secure two kills, one of which was for himself. Yeah, this is one thing with the Rampage and these wards where they are. Uh, Team Ascend, they do not have many wards at all on the right. Well, no, not on the right, in fact. So that is just open to ganks from Don't Stack all the time. Left side, however, there is the odd ward here and there. It but... just goes to show that how wards don't just save lives. Wards can also help you win games. It's just, in the long run, they're super duper important. Another thing I want to point out real quick is that uh, Rampage uh, is very good as Twin Blast goes down mid, thanks to that Bellica and Rampage rock stun combo. Rampage is much better than Wukong early game. So the fact that Rampage is taking advantage of that really plays to the, the player's knowledge of the game and the game's characters, knows that he can gank early on, whereas Wukong cannot do so as effectively. Uh, and he's really getting that. And as soon as I say that, Wukong takes this purple buff and he's looking for a gank on Tang Runer. Yeah, unfortunately that ward on right lane has gone so he doesn't know he's there in Viz. Is Tang Runer gonna die? That is the question. We'll keep an eye on the map for any other happenings. We just have Twin Blast here farming in mid lane and we have the dual lanes just farming as well. Seems to me like Tangrooner is going to back, so Cranky Trashcan is going to back off, trying not to make himself noticed there on the map. Doesn't want to give his position away, and Cranky's going to back as well. So, uh, looking at the stats here, there's a 3 to 0 kills uh, advantage right now for Deflink, uh, Deflinklin. Sorry, I just cannot say that name. I'm just really bad at German. Let me try one more time. Deflinklin Suplins. That's like the whole freaking name right there. Rip butchered. We could just call them the soups too. That's just what it translates into. Deep Lincoln. I like Deep Lincoln though. I like it. I gotta represent, yeah, right? No. The more you say it, the more I get along with it. Yeah. Anything else just not there. So yeah. Alright, Faded Ren jumps away. They miss the rock, but Haley does not miss the knockup. She does miss the bomb though. Faded just keeps trying to run away with that dash of his, the rocket dash that Twin Blast has. Uh, Cranky Trash Can comes in from the jungle, tries to use his staff. Faded Ren, nice matrix dodge on that rock. And uh, I don't think he's going to have to back up, except Bellica does knock him up, does use the bomb, does use her ultimate, and that's bye bye for Twin Blast. That's 0 and 2. Twin Blast right off the bat. Not good. Unfortunately. Haley has picked up that 2-0 early game. He is 7-6 minions now below. But he does have an extra card point. Having font of experience on uh, is a very interesting thing that I've noticed a lot of people doing. I've not really paid attention that much uh, coming down to Paragon's closure in the tournaments. I, I haven't really noticed that that was really the trend the whole time, but it is really interesting to see because I know, it, at least in pubs, you don't see that too much. You see advanced evolution or, you know, maybe going into possessed Spriking early on, but yeah, they just pick off Sour right there. A good gank from Haley and I don't stack, and it looks like this solo lane tower is going to fall, and that's going to be the first tower uh, going to uh to a d d Lincoln's favor yeah you were saying about the op um not OPD, the font of experience are you specifically saying carries uh yeah carries specifically that is also. because um in eu most carries are building opd and as you see neft he is building inside he's going eight and then he should build four into intellect to get that the opd gives more damage based on your level so the quicker you get fun of experience the more you benefit from the levels the more damage you do so cranky trash can did a nice gank up on bellica in mid was chasing her told you fell hey you fell you want a free kill sure turn around and got a snipe but meanwhile mid lane a rock lands right on twin blast big old forehead and kills him again 
Twin Blast is now 0-3. Not a good start for Twin Blast. Yeah, this is why you don't really see too many Twin Blasts in EU, in my opinion. They're just so easily bullied. They don't have much damage. They've got little maneuverability. Their damage mainly comes from their grenades until the late game. Neft ends up picking up another kill, which is good. You want your Sparrow to snowball. And I think they're going to be looking to uh, do a Fangtooth quite soon here. They're going to take this Tier 1 tower in duo lane. After taking Tier 1 tower in solo lane, all they have left is mid lane. And they'll have plenty of map control to be able to do it. Yeah, there is wards in on Fangtooth at the moment. So even if they do start it, Ascend will know. Let's pay attention to but mid lane real like quick. That. We got the yep. beautiful Bellica and Rampage combo again. Rampage lands the stun, Bellica lands the knock up bomb, and there's nothing Faded Rent can do about that. It's just too much. Yeah. I don't stack showing why Rampage is so good and just showing complete map dominance. He's in left lane, right lane, mid lane. You don't know where he is. Cranky Trashcan just cannot keep up. Even though Cranky Trashcan is really good when it comes to that leveling. Uh, he just needs to be more of a lane presence right now and help his teammates out, especially mid lane. Muriel comes in with the ultimate, but it's too little too late. Has nothing left to shield there. Here comes Sour in from the jungle, trying to go in for Haley. Wants to kill her. Misses that tether. Does get the light, though, and does actually hit the ultimate, but he's going to die for it. And Muriel went down as well. Uh, and that's three down for Ascend right now. And, man, D. Flinken right now yeah. looking super dominant. One thing I'm going to point out is even though Cranky hasn't had any map pressure anywhere, he's just been farming your game, he does have the most gold and the highest level in the game. Hopefully it pulls through for them soon, because if not, then this game might be over before he even gets started. And that's that Deep Lincoln's first Fangtooth. So now they got the advantage on that as well. They got two tier one towers and Fane Tooth at 11 minutes into the game. Rampage has purple, is that? Yeah, he's got purple, he's invis. And he comes out of invisibility. They're going to ambush Cranky, try to do it as quick as possible before he flips away. There's nowhere he can go. That wall is too high, and that's an easy pick on Cranky who should be given a good amount of XP because he has not died yet until then. He's got two deaths. Now he's got two deaths? Okay, he's so already had died. I missed yeah. that. But Neff just going in, getting a double kill in dual lane. And uh, now they got to go back and clear that minion wave. And, oh, man. Another one goes down. Faded Ren. And, yeah, that's four down right now for, for Ascend. It's just they, just, they just can't get their momentum back they had such good momentum in the semifinals, and they just just can't can't keep pushing forward with it they just getting steamrolled right now to say the least yeah the main thing is the twin blast is 0 and 5 the thing is with a carry if you're behind you can't do the damage if you're a tank and you're behind you're still a tank That's why I like playing tanks, because, you know, less pressure. <laughs> I'm yeah, just kidding. Yeah, that's why I play tanks. I like never I dying. I and stuff like that. I play like Severog and Rampage and stuff like that. Kalari, <laughs> I hit hard, but they really have the best escapes, and they're not very, uh, in the, uh, like, independent. At least in the beginning of the game, they're not. And I like being, you know, my mo own independent hero. Yeah, do you remember the meta when Wraith with Gravestone was meta? Wraith with Greystone? Uh, that's, that's very specific. Totem. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, just go full tank. Mm -hmm. who, who needs ADCs? Meanwhile, uh, the, the tier 2 was being pushed on, but... It looks like we're going for a 14-minute or prime right here. Cranky Trashcan knows that D. Flinken are all there. They're all trying to get this. He's going to try and steal this with Wukong. He's not going to be able to jump over that hole in the wall, and they're going to have to give it up. Wow. Yeah, 
Yeah, if we definitely had to throw anybody under the bus, it would be Faded Ren with that Twin Blast right about now. 0-6, just, uh not pretty at all. That Sparrow is 5-0. That's a second Fang Tooth for Deflinkin. Haley teleports forward with that Teleblank, tries to get it done, just can't. Tangrooner's there in the fog wall, but backs off when reinforcements arrive. That's just always been such a nasty combo. Ever since they put Blink into the game, that's just always been a thing. Blink with Bellica, Naka, Bomb, Drone. It's just such a nasty engage. Or Blink with Howitzer in the landmine back, you know, when people used Howitzer a lot. Uh, it's, it's such a good initiate, and it gives casters the ability to initiate really well, too. You don't have to wait for the tank to do it. And again, Faded Ren gets caught with the rock and gets blown up by the Bellica Bomb and goes down. Cranky Trash Can is trying to do some sort of damage. I think he's going for the Rampage, uh, trying to kill him. It's not going to be enough, and he's going to get caught out, and he's going to die as well. Tank Gruner over there, meanwhile, applying a lot of pressure while his teammates are pushing up the lane. And his Ascend just can't do anything right now. They just can't. Yeah, they're so far behind. It's a 30,000 gold difference. 30,000. Yeah. There goes the first inhibitor. So, so D. Flinken, you know, coming in here with a really funny team name, but not a really funny attitude. They are 100% serious, and they want their names in that game. False sense of security. Give a silly name, your team will laugh, mm -hmm. play stupidly, and make mistakes. So now we got D Flink and sticking together. This is really smart. They're rotating as a team, trying to pick off some more. Cranky Trash Can trying not to get picked off. He does somehow. He tries to flip away, but he gets rooted by FaZe. What an amazing energy lance from FaZe to hit all of those. And that's just Cranky Trash Can getting picked off. The other four are just protecting their inhibitor. And they actually surrendered. Like, I don't blame them for that surrender. It's a 35,000 gold difference now, and only a minute ago it's 30,000. It was only going to go one way, to be honest. That is it the first time, though, that I've ever seen a surrender in a competitive game. To be honest, that's the same for me. Like, it wasn't that Ascend did anything wrong. It's just that Don't Stack was just so... Dominant with that rampage, landing the rocks, being everywhere. Without the wards from Ascend, he was just a massive threat. That's just that's just mind-boggling to me. I've never seen a surrender in a competitive game. Like a Paragon, at least. I'm sure it happened before. I've just never seen it. Oh, I mean, we just saw we just saw Ascend absolutely destroy in in their semifinals. You know, the the two games where they won, they won with a stellar, stellar performance, and then to just come in there and just lose in the first five ten minutes. Uh, it's you know it's insane when you when you think about the uh, the skill level of these. Players. Alrighty, so we have Tangruner and Neft back on their Revenant and Sparrow, and we got a Wukong one more time uh, on the right side. So that's probably going to end up being Cranky Trash Can again. He really likes that. We got a Severog now, so we might be seeing a Severog and Solo Lane coming out from Sour, if that's the case. Just just gonna point out the bands by Ascend. It was Rampage and Deflinken. It was Wraith. So no Rampage and no Wraith, that's really... So they definitely don't want you fell on Wraith. That's that's something that they noticed probably from playing their other games. And uh, as Ascend definitely figured out that Rampage is really good, they should get rid of him as well. Uh, Erdbeer going with FaZe one more time. I don't stack is now on Richter. That's interesting. We're going to see a Richter jungle. Richter jungle is really strong. As he long is. as he can land his hooks. He is, and that's the key right there. Just like Rampage needs to land his rocks, 
Richter needs to land a suck. So we see Gideon actually coming out of Haley. No Bellica this time. Was that no Bellica on either side? Bellica was not on the other side. That's surprising. Maybe they're like, Bellica, just too OP. We need to try go for something else. Like, we've got a game to play around with. Let's just have fun. Maybe. You know, you never know. I mean, it's not for cash prize. It's not for, like, five-digit, you know, sums of money. So they probably don't have to be too serious about it. But at the same time, you still kind of want that, that first-place reward. So I don't see why you wouldn't want to try as much as you can. But uh, Ascend definitely has a really strong comp now. Faded Ren playing Fey, which is definitely known as a very dominant mid laner. Uh, and uh, Shui... Uh, oh, no, I was wrong. Shui did pick Bellica. Yeah, That's Shui. why they don't have Bellica. I'm sorry. And for some reason, I'm posting are, are they expecting Don't Stack to go for that early ward? Sour with the early subjugate. Trying to pick off Richter here. They're trying to death ball. Trying to get a kill. Bellica gets the knock up on Richter. Sour's body blocking. And they do end up getting the kill. Sour is very low. And they are going for those first picks. Wow. They are really, really aggressive now. They are going for their hardcore strats, it seems. Yeah, what I thought happened there was Cranky saw last game don't stack go into the jungle, put that ward down, so he knew he was going to do sort of the same thing again. So he was like, everyone go right lane, go down into the jungle, let's try catch him out if he's going back down there again, and they did it perfectly. Very, very good uh, observation and thinking from Cranky. He is one of the smarter players in the game, uh, so definitely good on him for remembering that point. And bouncing back from that. And now they definitely have a good momentum here in the beginning. Just from even that one kill. Yeah. Don't stack getting put behind on the farm. He's down a kill. They've got first bloods. Sour taking a lot of damage from Tangruner early on though. Yeah. This is just a problem playing any hero melee into Revenant or ranged. It's just, they can bully you from a distance and you can't really do anything. You have to play under your tower. So here's an interesting thing to note. There is no Muriel in this game. Yeah, I was just thinking of something missing. <laughs> so we'll see how this plays out. Should be a little bit more interesting. You know, Muriel was getting a little bit of an eyesore. So, at least for me right now, this is definitely looking to be a bit more fun. Uh, of a game. Yeah, it's the Bellica support. Bellica support is always so fun. You know what? I also love doing Iggy's support. It's just so trolly. I so love it. Faded yeah. Ren, though. Well, you set your ward tone turrets out so far, and then... Mm -hmm. Faded Ren able to dance around both Gideon and Richter as Cranky Trash Gang comes in, jumping on I Don't Stack, and now both Haley and I Don't Stack are pretty low, and they have to back off. That was some really good Twinkle Toe action from Faded Ren. Yeah, he's probably learning that Haley is pretty accurate, so he needs to try think one step ahead. Cranky Trash Can picked up the purple buff and left River, looking for something duo lane, not going to get anything. They back off. He's going to go back to mid lane. Faded Ren is being very aggressive because he does have red buff on Faye. That's very deadly. So we'll see what he ends up doing. Very, very aggressive. Not letting Haley back, which is really important. Haley does get a good uh, cosmic rift up on his head, though. So we're going to have to take a, 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 a see what's going to end up happening. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, Don't Stack is there to try and pull out Faye, but Faye's just backing out. Meanwhile, Cranky is just counter jungling the left jungle. He's not even level 5 yet. That's very, very ballsy. But he's pulling it off. He knows where Richter is. Yeah. He has vision. Faded Ren keeps providing vision for him, and he's able to just do it very safely. This is a very, very big power play by Cranky. Richter really needs to level up and get to rank 5 uh, before he can really start uh, securing his, his kills. I mean, he'll, he'll land his hook, sure, but to be very precise with it, to be very 100% uh, sure that you're going to get the kill, you really want that skewer. And doing anything in your power to really slow that down is just so good for Cranky. And he was able to do that. I mean, I don't stack is at level 3. Cranky is almost at level 5. He's definitely on the second half of level 4. And Wukong is also much quicker at clearing jungle.
than Richter is, especially at level 5. So it's going to be hard for him to catch up. Yeah, Cranky probably just understanding that with Don't Stack's last game, he's normally out there doing other things, not being in his jungle as much, capitalizing from that, putting him behind so he's forced to gank more, putting him to self situations where he doesn't want to be. And in the meanwhile, Faded Ren gets hit with the black hole from Gideon. Here comes I Don't Stack with Richter. Gonna try and land that pull. He misses. Haley does land the meteor. Here comes Cranky Trash Can, though. Stunning uh, Haley. And, uh, oh, here comes a teleport. Haley does end up killing Faded Ren. Cranky Trash Can trying to deal some damage, but to no avail. And uh, Faye does end up going down to Haley near the end over there. So, finally got some. Yeah. Gideon got some payback. I'm not too sure. I don't know how much I don't stack plays Richter, but it's certainly not as good oh, as Rampage He's going for an game. invade. He's going for an invade. What's Cranky going to do? He's trying to take the green. Revenant is rotating as well. Severog is coming in. Sour is going to try and fight because I don't stack. Here comes Faye. Gideon. Gideon, Gideon destroys uh, Wukong, and now it's a 1v3. Severog's got to get out of there. And he is almost in the clear. Haley just does not Faye's connect with that behind. comment. Faye is coming up from behind. Turns around on Haley. Haley has no mana. Here comes Faded Ren, though. Not level 5 yet. If Faded Ren was level 5, he would be able to do something. Here comes Severog coming back. Trying to pull off a subjugate. Trying to make uh, Gideon turn into a plant. But that's not going to help. Anyway, Faded Ren turns onto who the Revenant, who then gets blown up by Shui on Bellica. So... They get some support there on that invade, but that was a really good invade by Richter. And Richter can be a really good bully. He's one of the better early game junglers because of his large amount of health. He's able to go in there and uh, really mess with them. So he took advantage of that. He knew Cranky was weak from that mid lane altercation, and uh, he was in trouble. Now Sparrow is going to be bullying Wukong a little bit. He's going to have to back off. Uh, he's not going to be able to do any more uh, invading for now. So, just some really interesting stuff. Sour is finally level 5. I wanted to point that out earlier, but so much was going on. Tangruna was level 5, and Sour was level 3. <coughs> that was really bad for him. Haley yeah. low on one, mana. Getting one hit thing I want to point out. This Shui with the Lord Volstock. And Cranky Trash, uh, Cranky Trash Can with the Lord Volstock. I think that is. I think that is a double Volstock. Nope, it's just a card bug. Ignore Cranky is not. It's just Shui. Shui does have Lord Volstock. Wow. That is very interesting for a support, but it makes sense. And to give power, you know, on Bellica, that's really, really good as well. Give that extra burst in the beginning. Like, I've never tried Lord Volstock but sometimes you see people snowball with it so hard, they are the most gold in the entire game, as well as highest level. It's just one of those things where it's a high risk, high reward. Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't get the gold enough, you lose more than you gain. But especially on a cast like Bellica, you need the abilities to level up to do your damage. Haley XR is doing a good job of staying alive, though. I mean, from what I can tell, at least. I don't know if that's a health club bug or not, but hits Faded Ren with another black hole in mid. Misses the it Comet, though, from the faded, top. Uh, but Faded, yeah, faded managed hit. to run away. <clears throat> faded manages to run away because of that miss from Haley. Yeah, Ascend really learning from last game, hoarding right side as well. However, uh, Deep Lincoln does have a deep ward into Cranky's strong jungle. You fell, finally hit level 5. Start expecting those Murdoch lasers to start dropping. Cranky Trash Can going to gank Tangruner here, trying to help Sour out. I can't tell how much health Sour has, but he does hit Tangruner away with that Colossal oh, Blow. Here comes Cranky Trash Can trying to help his buddy out. Tangruner 
manages to get the ult off on Severog as he tries to run away. Sour knows where he's at. He's going to try and land a subjugate. Cranky Trash Can lands the Ruiji Bang and stuns him and kills him. There's that snipe coming out from Murdoch. Did he secure the kill? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Faded Ren ends up dying. Again, Faded Ren is not having a good day right now in mid lane against the Flinken. But it's a little bit better than what Twin Blast was, anyway. Yeah, we haven't seen too much presence from I don't stack this game. I'm unsure if that's because he's worrying about landing his hooks. Because um, I know sometimes that does put me off if I'm playing Richter. I'm not too present in the lanes. Mm -hmm. I remember back uh, in Legacy when you still had travel mode, the base movement speed was very slow. And so landing Richter's hooks was second nature to me. But in Monolith, it's definitely much harder because everyone moves so quickly. Cranky Trash Can looking to do something here, help out duo lane, but spots Richter and backs off. Yeah, he was also stood on a ward, so... We see Tang Gruner going for this river buff. Sour, Cranky, and Faded are all around that river buff, but they all back off of it, very interestingly. So Tang Gruner ends up picking it uh, up, and we'll see what uh, ends up happening here. So Tang Gruner is being very, yep, he's he's being very cheeky right now. Gets caught up by Wukong and Severog and gets picked off. Meanwhile, Faded Ren being aggressed by Richter, who's in mid, uh, sees that Sour is approaching on Severog. Here comes the ult out of Fae. There's a subjugate. There's the hit. There's the black hole from Gideon. And Faded Ren ends up going down. And now Sour's trying to run away. Make sure that he doesn't get caught in it. Cranky Trash Can comes out of nowhere. Starts hitting Gideon a little bit. Stuns Gideon. Keeps hitting him a little bit. Gideon manages to teleport. Will Gideon be able to escape? Who knows? Richter's right there trying to body block. Gideon did escape, but Richter ends up going down. Interestingly I think, uh, enough, just disconnected. Yes, I believe Faze disconnected. He ran straight through second to the inhibitor. I believe he did die. He did did commit yeah. seppuku. They did pick up Ufeld though before the DC, so it's not too bad, and they got the tower. Always unfortunate when there's a disconnect, but the show must go on. You must keep playing. This will give Ascend a very, very good uh, advantage here to come back, as poopy as it is. It's just the truth. I mean, it'd probably be worse if, uh, like, a sparrow disconnected or something. Yeah. Haley gets but hit by is... that knockup from Bellica, but they're not able to connect on that. Cranky Trash Can does end up going on Richter again. Neft comes into mid lane. Not able to do anything to kill Cranky Trash Can, but here comes Tank Gruner, and he's caught in the midst of things. Four people from Ascend. He managed to ult and uh, kill that uh, member of Team Ascend before Bellica. they died. I think it was Bellica, yep. So they managed to actually get a kill out of it, and he managed to remain unscathed. So knowing when to use uh, Revenant's Reckoning ability and sending them to the Netherworld is really good for being able to both, you know, complete a kill, but also escape from a kill. Yeah, like I was saying in the last game, or the game before, when there was three in mid versus Faded, I think it was, he used it, he ran away, he lived when any other hero would have died. Funny enough, no team has gone for Fangtooth yet. It's almost 15 minutes and we have not seen uh, any severe Fangtooth trials yet. Uh, we do have Revenant using that natural boost, running away from Wukong, who's trying to chase him down. Does hit him with the Ruji Bane, does try to stun him. He is dead now, thanks to that Murdoch snipe. And now they are going back. Black Hole catches Shui and Faded Ren. Here comes Neft with the ult. Kills Faded Ren. Here comes Sour. Subjugates Neft and is on Sparrow. They are now fighting each other. 
Haley's running away, and I believe uh, that Bellica was actually killed by Haley. And now Haley's coming out from behind, actually, to try and pick off Cranky Trash Can. Cranky Trash Can does a nice little jump around. Haley teleporting behind Cranky Trash Can. Cranky keeps running around. Haley runs away, and they both manage to escape from each other. And there's both three people now live on each side. It's very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Faze is back now. So... Good. And the reason why they haven't started fighting team is because no team has a clear advantage. And it's just too much of a dedication at this moment in time. But even though there is 8,000 gold in the favor of Deep Lincoln, it's uh, 8 to 9 kills in favor of Ascend. Here comes Savarag with a subjugate on phase. Knocks her away with the Colossal Blow right into Shui's beautiful seismic assault here comes you fell also and they are now assaulting the gates here no pun intended no graystone in sight but they are going to start this fang tooth while the uh, rest of the team on the other side d flinkin is orbiting around them and now some stuff is going to be going on in their jungle cranky trash can is looking for a pick but gets pushed back richter gideon revenant all around sparrow goes back to her tower Faded Ren is outside in the outskirts trying to play the perimeter while the rest are not even there. They're just not going to challenge that Fang Tooth. And we finally have the first Fang Tooth go down at 16 minutes into the game in favor of Ascend. Yeah, that's what I'm on about. They had a clear advantage. Deep Lincoln was everywhere around the map. They had a got a pick. They couldn't really engage safely, and most of Ascend were at full health. I don't stack, gets caught by the subjugate and by phase ult, and he goes down. Here comes Cranky Trash Can trying to stun Gideon, successfully does so, trying to deal some damage. Turns around prematurely to try and get up to Gideon. Gideon falls, more screams going down. Haley gets uh, a good kill on Bellica. Tangruner going in there, killing Murdoch. Murdoch is killed successfully. Tangruner pushed under tower by Cranky Trash Can. Cranky is going off right now. He's definitely being the most supportive on his team right now with the most kills and levels. And he's just he's just trying. He's trying really hard. You can tell Cranky really wants to win. He's playing on another level right now. Yeah, Cranky just showing why Wukong is such a viable hero in the jungle. And they're going to go Especially for Prime. when he's ahead. And this is another reason he's so good at taking objectives. Can Deep Lincoln get there in time? Doesn't seem to be so. Cranky does have Flame of Zetchen as the jungler, and they get that easy prime secure. Yeah, they're just taking up black so that they can't be used against them. They're going to push this tier 1. Going to take it without breaking a sweat. Yeah, tier 1 was going to go down, so they'd rather just defend tier 2 if they have to. If they have to back to inhib, so be. Don't stack trying to be a bit ballsy, go straight in there by himself. Just almost paid it. the ultimate price. He did get it stunned yeah. and subjugated, took some health away. And here's another assault on the tier two by Ascend. They're gonna get shut down though. Gideon is pretty good at clearing waves after all. Got Sour going into the jungle. Cranky Trash can actually picking off Tangruner, starting to 1v1 him as well. He gets rooted by the ult. Now he's trying to catch up to him. We know Wukong is a really fast hero, and he does end up getting to him. Meanwhile, in mid lane, heroes are falling. Richter goes down. Now it's just Sparrow and FaZe left alive, uh, and Ascend is coming back now. They're, they're pushing through strong. Yeah, all still nearly full hit points, and the ore prime will just continue to take him back to full health. It feels really weird. Like, the first game you had, I don't stack, and Tankaruna popping off. And now, I don't stack's 1, 6, and 6. Tankaruna 1, 4, and 0. Oh. Wait, are they trying to end it? Yeah. They're, they're gonna end it. They weren't happy with the first game. They say, screw it, we're taking you down. They early. they came back. They came back. They wanted it done. A phase, I think, disconnected again, though, near the end there, if I if I was not mistaken. Um, but 
Yeah, that was just uh, uh, that's the ascend that we know. That's the ascend that we expected to see going into these finals. And now we're gonna go to the last and final third game. Very fitting, very fitting ending to the finals between these two really, really good teams. Unfortunately, there was never a game three because of some issues that have occurred between the two teams. One of the team members of Deflinken had to leave, and they wanted a sub, but the sub was not a registered sub when they were signing up for the tournaments, and Team Ascend would not allow it. Therefore, what ended up happening is they Ascend was pleading that the other team would disqualify because they didn't have any valid substitutes. The other team didn't want to play unless they had their fifth man, and there just ended up being this stalemate at the end, and there was never a third game played. I have an official message here from Visionary Games on the subject that I would share for you guys' clarification as to why there wasn't a third game. Thank you so much, everyone, for your participation in this first tournament hosted by Visionary Games. Almost all teams had some great moments, and it really showed. However, we have looked at the results of the tournament, and frankly, we are in shock with the misconduct that happened between the two teams at the end. Because of this, the tournament director and the referees have talked and decided that the final outcome of the tournament was a tie, with each team having won one match against the other, as this is the outstanding record. We will be holding onto the prize of the custom skins, as well as the name engraving on the wall, because we will not promote such negativity within our game. Both teams will, however, receive the undefined prize in the original announcement to this tournament. So because this was a tie, nobody won the prizes which they were initially going to give you were exclusive skins in the new game that they're going to have, and they were actually going to do something really cool, and that's engrave the names of the players into the wall of the Prime Pit when they make, you know, their, their Orb Prime in their new game, the names are going to be uh, engraved in the wall, it was going to be a cool little Easter egg, but neither team is going to have their names engraved, uh, they will hold on to those custom skins for a later date, and then they're going to give some other prize that was not defined in the original announcement. When our game is up and running, we will once again host a tournament on the same scale. However, the custom skins will be included with this one. So there will be an opening day tournament, and they will include the custom skins as a prize then. We need to formally apologize to everyone for the lack of organization that was this past tournament. This was the first time the Visionary Games team have ever set anything up on such a grand scale, and we severely underestimated the amount of organization that was needed to pull this off. The sole reason for allowing random subs in the end matches was to allow as much play as possible, so we proposed this for the finals match with this in mind to continue play. This in hindsight is what caused a lot of the problems for the finals and will not be allowed in the future. Stepping back and going over what happened, we will look at what failed and what worked and move forward with the best intentions in mind for our community. There will be dedicated time zones for the EU and NA servers. There will be a much longer grace period than just 24 hours. There will also be a much more strict enforcement for the rules seeing as how there will be more time for communication in the next tournament, among other things that need to be improved. Visionary Games learned a lot from this experience and will strive to do a million times better going forward. Until then, good luck and have fun. And so that was the last message from Visionary Games on this tournament, and this is the official result of the tournament. As for you guys, thank you so much for watching these uh, these gameplays. It really was a lot of fun ca shout casting this with uh, with the, the um, demonic with demonic. He's from Visionary Games, uh, and it was just lots and lots of fun. And I was really thankful to have this opportunity again. Thank you to Visionary Games for granting this opportunity to me. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching the uh, last competitive Paragon tournament ever, even if it did end in a very, very, very sad and, and you know, very sad way, in my opinion. Uh, very similar to how Paragon ended, so I guess it's fitting in a very morbid kind of way, but what you gonna do when they come for you, you know? Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, make sure I'll have a wonderful day. Peace.